Kellin is a late medieval farmstead with a range of buildings, from the medieval house itself to the humblest of beast houses and stables. Together they tell a story of the evolution of habitation and farming practice. The Landmark Trust's project to conserve and repair the site needs to take into account the range of both historic and future uses and ensure that we treat the buildings with honesty and respect. Preserving the surface texture of the site is critical to this process. The repair of the fabric of the buildings, the stone, mortar and any external renders is done with appropriate lime mortars and materials. Nigel Jarvis from Timar Lime is an expert in lime mortar specification. Here he shows us how close analysis of the original building materials can help to define how repair work is approached. So I think the interesting thing at looking at the building like this um, is the phasing, the way it's developed, the way it's grown as a, as a, as a collection of agricultural buildings. Um, the way it's, it's come from its surroundings, the materials, because we weren't able to, or they weren't able to transport materials at that, at that time, obviously. Um, what it's constructed with, um, how it's constructed, the quality of construction, and how that's appropriate for um, it, it, its use. So we've got a gable end of a building built into a bank built with materials, um, lots of field stone, lots of rounded stones, not particularly um, useful stone for building really, um, but they've, they've, um, they've used it nonetheless. Um, it's then bonded with, uh, or bedded in uh, an earthen mortar, and this mortar is very soft, very crumbly. It's really just earth uh, that's been dug out and then mixed with uh, quicklime from a kiln. Um, and you can also see remnants of firing material. So this is, uh, uh, would be in coal or coke that was mixed with lime, uh, fired uh, the lime, and then those were all then mixed together, the earth and the lime mixed together to create what's called a hot mix. And you can see that's what creates this patination. Really soft, really crumbly, but actually very appropriate. You know, it, 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 it's worked. These buildings are existing, standing, they flex, they move, and the softness is their strength and they survive very, very comfortably. During their lifetime, the buildings at Llewyn Kellyn have been added to and repaired. In the last hundred years or so, lime mortar fell out of fashion and non-porous cement-based mortars were used for repairs to traditional solid-walled buildings. Solid-walled buildings rely on the breathability of their building materials to stay both structurally sound and healthy. So it's what's happened over time is um, repairs have happened, so cement has been used. Cement was then the material that was on the builder's merchant shelf, that was what was there, that was what was convenient and that's what people got used to using and these repairs have happened. The problem with this is moisture can then run down the, the, the face of the stone and because cement is impervious and, and brittle it often creates cracks behind it and the moisture can run and get trapped inside the building and that moisture then accumulates. And it's all a bit brutal, it's a bit hard, it's a bit insensitive. Before repairs are considered, time needs to be taken to look at the causes behind any apparent structural problems. So looking at a, at a, at a wall like this where there's obvious failure and it's, um, it started to fall apart, but then actually looking at the cause, and it's a really simple cause, and so often the cause is just poor maintenance. And they, they actually having no gutter on there at all would probably be better than having that bit of gutter which then concentrated all of that run and all of that bit of run on this and it's flushed the mortar out of the wall. And this isn't a failure of the mortar, it's a failure of repair and so often we find that's the problem. It's actually not looking at how we're maintaining buildings. It's a really simple and obvious thing to do, but we're all guilty of it, we're all guilty of not doing that gentle ongoing maintenance. Before lifting at all, we carefully consider the aesthetics of repair. How much repair is needed? How will we use the buildings? And how do you want the site to look once the project is complete? When I first come to a building like this, I'm often thinking, what is the minimum I can do? Um, I think we're often spending too much money, and I think that we're often uh, um, wanting to, to Botox a building, to sanitise a building, and I think that that, um, uh, that approach of a, 
a gentle repair and minimizing what needs to be done, say, uh, uh, um, identifying cause of damage and obviously removing that, uh, that, that cause to start with um, before doing repair. And I think in that way we can actually retain an awful lot of the building um, um, rather than, 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 than changing it um, completely. That then means that often you have this um, identification of chronology of repair, which I think is, is, is really attractive and I think we should be encouraging that as, as part of the progression um, of the building. The buildings at Clue Callan have all decayed over the years in different ways. Some walls have suffered from lack of maintenance, others from structural movement. But they are all exposed to the elements, which inflict a slow weathering away of material. So to a point, mortars in, in the wall are, are the wicking, they're the breathing, they're the element of the building which allows um, that flex and movement and moisture to come in and out. They absorb the wetting and drying cycles, the freeze-thaw cycles that inevitably happen in an area like this. So you'll always find that um, to a point they will be sacrificial, They'll, they will decay, they'll erode and that's part of their function, that's not a failure, it's part of what they need to do. Um, but as you've seen on, uh, on areas where there have been damage to gutters and those, those protections for a building, where that breaks down, then um, it's too much for it to cope with. But on a, on a general basis, if you have the, the finish of the building appropriate or each elevation of that building, the finish of each elevation appropriate to the weather that's hitting it, then you'll get a slow... Um, uh, sacrificing of, of say a lime wash which is very easy and cheap really to put back on. The cider house was added on to the back of the main house sometime in the 17th or 18th century. It is a functional building, well built but was not well maintained. Most of the original mortar had washed out of the walls and it has been almost completely repointed. So this was a building which had various elements to it which were, um, were failing. There was a lot of damage to the, to the roof. There was a lot of ingress in through the top of the wall because of damage to the stone tiles. So that's obviously all being repaired. You can see a new um, wall plate's gone on, new rafters, new kicking board, um, tiles over the top. This, I understand, is going to have gutters on it, which is obviously going to uh, protect this wall from rain. Sometimes these buildings didn't have gutters on them, so that rain could be driven onto this wall. So the finish of these walls is they've been lime washed and the lime wash then helps to protect the stone. Yeah, obviously you can't see it now but the build up of what's underneath here is pointing that's been repaired and replaced where, where necessary. And in each situation when we look at a building we identify the materials that we need to repair it. So there are a range of limes which we can use which have different qualities. So you have fat limes which are very soft and flexible and breathable. The other mortars that you can produce are from uh, uh, limes that are called hydraulic limes and hydraulic limes have impurities within the limestone itself and those impurities contain silica and alumina when you fire them they become reactive and they give a faster set so there's a range of hydraulics NHL 2, 3.5 and 5. NH stands, NHL stands for natural hydraulic natural because those impurities are contained within the limestone. So it's important to identify the building's needs, it's important to identify the softness of the stone, the appropriateness of the mortar that's going back into the to, to do the repair. The mortar that's here is using a, a grit sand which is about three mil aggregate uh, which goes down to a very fine sand and then another aggregate is much finer and much redder and that fine aggregate gives it the pigmentation. They then mix this with a mid-range hydraulic lime of 3.5, that means its compressive strength is about 3.5 newtons. And they mix that together to make up the mortar and apply it. So prior to any of this work going on, prior to any pointing or any lime washings, what you need to do is control the suction. So you need to make sure that you're not putting a wet material 
onto a dry background. If you do that, then you'll lose the bond between the two. So it's what you do is you wet up the background, and it means that you're controlling the suction of that background. So the new material that you put on can slowly bond into the surface. It's crucial that you do that between each coat. But also, as what you see is when these buildings get wet, the lime wash becomes more translucent. That's not a failure of the material, it's just a, a reality of how the material actually works. The stable block is also a functional building, but has fared better over time. We were able to take a less intrusive approach to the repair of its walls, and it became a repair project for volunteers and trainees, offering vital hands-on experience for those wishing to learn new skills. And, and I think the interesting thing, and in some ways the beauty of this block, is um, the, the complete variety of different um, mortars that have been uh, used in it. So there's the, there's the red mortar, as we saw on the other buildings, but then here you've got um, this, which is lighter. I think the other thing, the interesting thing to look at is that, that pointing. It's sort of untidy, really. It's sort of smudged across the face of the stone. This was a functional building. This was a building that was just housing animals. And it's quite, I like that pragmatism of repair. It, it's, it, or, you know, it's just being looked after. And the mortar here also has evidence of firing material. Though. So that's bits of coal. Then it comes to how we repoint. And although this is quite distinctly different to that, there's an honesty to that repair. We haven't tried to fake that mortar to look like that. Minimum intervention is important. I think it helps to minimise cost. I think it's about identifying those areas that just need gentle nurturing. And I think it helps to describe their functionality, preserving the character and the history of the building and that, that ongoing gentle repair rather than wholesale uh, improvement or, or it can be seen as improvement, it can be seen as, um, uh, as over-improvement, over-indulging on the building.